Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chaitali Bagh from the Middle East Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. And we are starting our series of interviews to cover the Dubai Air Show 2021. ADO will be at the show from 14th to 18th November to cover the show exclusively. In the pre-event interview, we have with us Mr. James Shan, Senior Director Defense Aftermarket EMEAI at Honeywell. With the post-pandemic world now opening up and all roads waiting to lead to Dubai from next Sunday, West Asia will be the sinusier of all eyes in the aerospace world, both civil and military. So we welcome you to ADU's chat room. And now I request Ms. Sangeeta Saxena, editor ADU, to take the proceedings further. Hello, welcome, James, to ADU. It's wonderful having you with us. And, uh, you know, we've been waiting for this event. Uh, Honeywell, uh, ADU is a company which is based out of India, and Honeywell has been a very major partner with India. And uh, we've always covered it, and it's been now nearly two decades since we've been talking about Honeywell uh, products in India. And it's wonderful for us to be uh, talking this with you prior the Dubai Air Show, which we are covering. So welcome to the show. And uh, we'll begin with our first question, which is, what is the market for Honeywell in the Middle East? Uh, thank you for having me, first of all. The, the market for uh, Honeywell in the Middle East has not, uh, has not changed. Uh, as long as Honeywell has been working in the Middle East. Of course, I focus on uh, our defense and space offerings and the management of that business in the Middle East. Um, for Honeywell, we have a, a long history of providing uh, the things that honey, the solutions that Honeywell uh, is known for are uh, uh, power generation, primary power plants, secondary power systems, uh, wheels and brakes, mechanical and air and thermal, and, and all of our long-standing offerings. In, in the Middle East, particularly now, we are uh, really focused on, uh, con on our connected solutions. Um, that is the uh, sensing, collection, uh, processing, uh, analyzing and dissemination of information. And that, that shows up in a lot of ways and in a lot of solutions. Uh, really uh, uh, focused in, in uh, our Middle Eastern business partners and, and operator needs now on uh, just that. In that. That shows up very specifically in military platforms through satellite communication services and solutions where the effect that we're trying to achieve is maximizing the mission capability of uh, existing platforms, say older legacy uh, type uh, flying vehicles and, and ground vehicles, as well as new platforms that are being developed, especially in the uh, unmanned uh, airspace. Um, so really uh, continuing what we're doing and, and then uh, focusing on uh, local development and uh, co-production for uh, satellite communication systems, as well as many other areas of collecting information and, and enhancing productivity and expanding mission capability and systems and platforms and facilities that are already in place today. Right, wonderful. Actually, from a generic perspective, we'll now come to a specific one because we're speaking before the buyer Air Show. So how is UAE as a market? How has it been? Is it a traditionally big market for Honeywell? It is a significant market, absolutely. Um, we have in our uh, total defense and space offerings, um, we have a lot of solutions already placed on the platforms, both uh, air and ground systems that the UAE is operating now, um, such as the T-55 primary uh, power plant on the CH-47, the Chinook uh, helicopter, um, a great deal of uh, solution content on the uh, F-16 fleet of aircraft um, the UAE operates. And, and really all of the platforms that uh, the 
that the UAE uh, Armed Forces um, and particularly uh, Joint Aircraft Command are operating. Um, very important market. Uh, we have a, a, a regional headquarters in Dubai for all Honeywell businesses. Um, so we're proud citizens and residents uh, of the UAE. Um, we have uh, very good relationships with all of the, the uh, government agencies, uh, especially Tawazin, um, as, as, a, as a governing body for you know, how UAE military procurements are undertaken. Um, so we're, we are deeply embedded and getting stronger all the time in the UAE. Right. And uh, last month, there was very major news about a month or two back about uh, Honeywell's agreement with Saudi Arabia. Can you just explain a little more about it? Yeah, certainly. We're very, we're very proud of this arrangement. Um, the Honeywell has long provided the primary power plant for the M1A1 and M1A2 uh, main battle tank. Um, that's the engine model we call the AGT-1500. And there are, are many of these engines operating throughout the Middle East and many in Saudi Arabia in their power in their M1A2 fleet. Uh, there's a, a great longstanding um, engine R&O uh, services provider in Riyadh, a Middle East propulsion company um, with, whom long, or, or with whom Honeywell has had a long relationship. And... Earlier this year, uh, we uh, came to an agreement with the General, General Authority for Military Industrialization, GAMI, uh, KSA government agency and Middle East Propulsion Company, MEPC, for Honeywell to license and support MEPC to perform MRO services on the AGT-1500. Uh, and it, we took just the right steps to make an arrangement with MEPC and GAMI and signed an agreement by which uh, it should take about maybe a year or 18 months to um, completely uh, bring into operation MEPC as a service provider for this engine. Um, but we have the agreements are in place and the project is underway right now. And soon we are looking for uh, MEPC to provide these services to the Royal Saudi Land Forces and neighboring operators, um, which is a great solution all around. So we have a local provider for this very important sustainment activity. A, the work will be performed by uh, a Saudi company uh, employing Saudi citizens, fulfilling the object, uh, objectives of um, Saudi Vision 2030. Um, we, it was a, a great way to strengthen our relationship with GAMI so that we can do more of these, um, both tra uh, transfer of technology and legacy system and development of new solutions with local Saudi companies um, under the uh, oversight of GAMI. Um, so it's just a, a, just a very nice, uh, uh, productive partnership that, that we've undertaken and um, uh, all relationships come with work, and, and this one has just been really great. Very, we're very proud of this move. It's a great, uh, it's a great pattern for what we want to do more of in the uh, kingdom as well as in the, the wider region. Right, which means that uh, you know when we're talking of MRO activity, such activity. the Middle East. And since you're heading the complete Middle East, which are the other contracts, other cooperations you have uh, for, uh, uh, you know, having your uh, MRO activity for your engines in the region? Our MRO activities, that, that is a big one. Anytime, uh, I will say that, however, we have the opportunity to um, transition sustainment of legacy systems into uh, good, competent uh, business partners uh, within each of the Middle East countries, we certainly will. Um, we, have a, we have a couple of other projects underway. It's a little early to talk about them. We haven't uh, signed the deals, but I will say that uh, our, our business partners certainly know who we are and our government agencies certainly know uh, who we are. 
uh, my colleagues in the um, commercial space, particularly in airlines, will have some nice announcements coming up uh, at the Dubai Air Show as far as um, uh, transferring additional uh, large, uh, small engine repair, auxiliary, auxiliary, pardon me, secondary power system repair uh, into partners in the region. And um, we'll, we'll have to wait for the news on that. Our focus uh, in defense and space going forward, um, we're, we're focused very heavily on satellite communications, um, developing solutions for uh, what we call small form, fa small form factor uh, communication systems and solutions for unmanned systems and smaller, um, both manned and unmanned air vehicles. Those endeavors we are undertaking with development partners in the UAE, and Saudi Arabia primarily, um, as well as Egypt and, and uh, Pakistan as well, where we are, uh, I think the traditional model um, for some companies has been developed uh, in the US or a Western country, come up with a final solution and then transfer that sustainment to a, a local business partner. Um, Honeywell is truly a global company, and, and that is uh, a, a deeply Im embedded in our culture uh, to be, uh, uh, we, we want to serve the markets and the needs, uh, generating solutions uh, where those solutions will be used. So in the UAE, we are working with um, a couple of companies right now to develop satellite communications for unmanned air systems. And that is uh, really from inception, uh, developing solutions that fit the specific needs um, of UAE operators that then when the platforms are in production and being produced, the solutions provided are ready fit for the specific missions identified in the beginning of the inception, say of the design and the application. Okay, and uh, does it also mean that uh, in addition to these three countries you've spoken about in the Middle East, uh, Saudi, UAE, and Egypt, uh, you also have a market in Israel? Sure. Yes, we do. Yeah. Was there more I could talk about that? Yes, absolutely. Israel okay. is, you know, it's a small country, but a very important country geostrategically, as well as, you know, it has one of the best forces in the world. So uh, we'd, we'd like actually like to understand what defense business Honeywell does with Israel. Certainly. I think that the, that the total offerings are similar. The, uh, that there isn't there are there are common uh, platforms operating in Israel as there are in um, GCC countries such as the F-15 that has a, a lot of Honeywell solutions on board uh, in its design. So that has made uh, Israel as an operator a very natural customer, and then the industry within Israel. Um, such as uh, Israel Aerospace Industries and Elbit and some of the longstanding Israeli uh, defense industry companies that have been supporting the operator become natural partners to Honeywell because they are local, uh, serving the operator. And then um, as, as part of our uh, MO, then we are working with those local support companies to transfer technology, build up their capabilities, bring the sustainment solution to the local operating environment. Um, so we have, uh, as in it, we do in all the countries, we have a, a very good relationship with um, you know, the, more, the majority of the uh, local industry supporting the operators in Israel. And uh, in addition to these countries, the, uh, which are the other countries Honeywell has its businesses in, in the Middle East? You've got a big list of countries, you know. So, uh, and keeping in mind the volatile situation in the region. So, uh, is, is there an increased demand? As the threat perception increases, does the demand increases? I'm, I'm not an expert in the... Uh 
the direct correlation of differences and threats and how that is then translating into defense budget formulation and requirements and like that. I think that um, I would say that we have, uh, well, Honey, Honeywell has uh, interests and, and we provide solutions in a, in a broad industrial and consumer uh, spectrum. So in, in um, oil and gas and, and refining and our um, uh, materials processing solutions and safety systems, uh, building management, airport uh, design and solution development and like that. We, we to varying degrees have uh, a lot of work in all the countries. The to to so there so whether we're uh, regardless of what's happening in one industry sector, generally something is happening in another such that we are always growing and always producing new solutions. Um, the 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 as as far as the defense spending that we've seen, um, I think that what's reported in uh, you know. Jane's and, and Teal and, and publications like that with some ups and downs in defense spending based on uh, COVID and, and, and generally uh, what's going on in, in the region. I, I think that we've seen that and we've felt that um, pretty consistently. Um, very fortunately, our solution offering is uh, very leading edge and and very broad so that we are we we weather those ups and downs pretty well um, and we tend to be out in front anyway so that we're uh not in a position of having to be reactive um, as much to you know ups and downs and uh, you know, spending from year to year we'd like to uh, understand that uh, in the region you uh, you head uh, what basically uh, would be you know uh, like we are heading towards a show, the market post COVID is now, you know, becoming better. So, uh, what what are you what is going to be your future plan, which is the immediate plan? You know, it's a uh, plan which you are planning now. You know, now that COVID is done with, and uh, things are getting better. So, how do you plan to expand? What is the expansion you see in the region, or uh, because you know the region is big. And uh, do you see the scope for an expansion in the region? Or do you think that you've come to a sustainable limit and then you'll continue here at this limit? Sure. We'll never be done. And we have great new solution offerings. The, the condensed version is we want to help operators and ministries get the very most out of the platforms and systems and solutions that they've already procured. So we have uh, very, uh, really exciting um, solutions that are, are, are pretty new and designed specifically for military application. Uh, we were discussing briefly Honeywell's JetWave MCX uh, satellite communications system uh, is a beyond visual line of sight uh, system that allows operators to uh, transfer, process, use, and disseminate a lot of data uh, comparatively from ground stations to flying platforms to the Inmarsat satellite uh, constellation um, back to flying vehicles and ground stations. And this, this ability to uh, to send and receive and process and use uh, a high uh, volume of data at any one time is allowing operators to really expand the capabilities of legacy platforms, say uh, a C-130 or a, a C-295 that has been flying around and maybe uh, have been, has been designed for uh, a smaller mission set um, when it was designed and procured and, and been flying around for years. Um, but to put a satellite communication system on board uh, a C-130 or a C-295 like JetWave now greatly expands the abilities of the crew and the total mission capability of that platform. 
So we have um, a great interest. The uh, United States Air Force has adopted the system on their uh, C-17 fleet. Royal Australian Air Force has adopted it for their C-130 fleet. We are working with operators in the region now to adopt it onto their C-130 fleets. Um, and the, we, we're bringing our 757 outfitted with the JetWave uh, solution to Dubai, where we will have a number of operators uh, being able to fly around and see the see the solution that is being provided, um, streaming data from ground to aircraft in real time. That is uh, just just watching it that instantly. Um, dual channel where we can have people in the cabin area of the aircraft operating with information, and the uh, uh, flight deck, the the cockpit using their own information to operate the aircraft and like that. This opening up of this pipeline of data um, that can go up and down is really a step forward, uh, a, a big step forward in expanding the, the capability of existing systems. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just so cool to see. And we, we encourage you to um, see the videos, get on the aircraft if you can and, and see what it can do. That is... Uh, that's a very immediate, something we're doing now. It's just a, a very immediate step we're taking um, where we, it, it, it takes a system that exists and just expands the capability, relatively low cost. Uh, and that's just exactly the thing we want to do. Further on, we have um, uh, great solutions that we're developing and deploying now for um, what we call connected maintenance, where we can collect information from flying platforms, conduct uh, preventive maintenance analysis so that we can lower total sustainment costs and increase, and increase mission capability, um, again, through the collection and management of data um, and connecting uh, the different elements of an operating force's needs, their the supply chain and depot and operators and logistics and, and all of that. Just, just great solutions and connected and 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 data. And that's that's our immediate and I think our, our long term for uh, long term future. Uh, all right, James. So when we continue we're continuing with defense, you've been speaking about space, and uh, you know there are space agencies in the Middle East. So in addition to uh, you know the UAE space agency, mm -hmm. you have been. In uh, you know, Honeywell has been in business with which other space agencies? Uh, to be brief, all of them in different ways. So, so the so these the solutions that we provide, um, we have systems on on. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of any any well known systems that we don't have solutions on, and I I can't. Right. Think of any. So we have our um, our solutions on, on all space vehicles to some, to some extent, uh, being developed in the region, um, and, and work with space agencies to develop, define requirements and develop solutions. That's a very specialized and small part of the business. Um, and then of course, with the satellite communications providers throughout the region, we have relationships because, um, we transfer data on their systems and, and we're leading edge in that area. So, you know, we, we work with them in the beginning. Right. And, uh, you know, one thing which is really being talked about uh, is manned and manned teaming. So is, uh, is that uh, one area where Honeywell has its forte in? Absolutely. Yes. Um, and this is, uh, these, are, these are development programs in each of the countries that I've identified. And we are working with both government agencies as well as um, both a government owned, partially government owned and private uh, entities in all countries to uh, offer uh, Honeywell solutions primarily in the, in the form of satellite communications, but also in the traditional power generation, air and thermal management, all of those solutions uh, with unmanned systems, developers in every country, certainly. And since we are talking before Dubai Air Show, uh, what is the relationship you have with Edge, Honeywell 
and edge? I would say uh, it's a fantastic long running uh, relationship with a number of edge companies. Um, so we are closely connected to uh, Global Aerospace Logistics, GAL and AMROC, um, Adasi, um, looking at the sourcing com uh, uh, components and services from EPI. So we have a great relationship with uh, the EDGE group. Thank you so much, James. That was wonderful speaking with you. And, uh, you know, when we meet at the show uh, about a week from now, it's, I'm sure you'll have lots more to tell us. And uh, with this, we hand us back to Chitali in Cyprus. She'll just put a closure to this. Thank you so much, James. Thanks, Anita, ma'am. It was uh, a pleasure to hear you both. And I'm expecting we will have a lot more to talk once we arrive at Dubai and things start uh, getting with the deals and everything. So I'm sure we will have more meetings at that time. Thank you so much, James, for your time. It was a pleasure having you with us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you have so much. Day. My great pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you in Dubai. Bye. See you in Dubai. Bye-bye.